So, so when I used to cross the fields, agriculture fields of Punjab, as a seven-year-old, all I saw was sometimes the swaying weeds in October or the sugarcane stalks on a cold winter. Never did I realize that behind this scenic view lay the efforts of our Indian farmer. So I started dwelling, dwelling into the agriculture sector of Punjab. And as I did, I realized that I realized the realities of farming practices taking place. The farmers were using obsolete practices of farming and therefore not even 50% of the effort they were putting in was being translated into the crop produce. So this brought me to the question that what can be done to increase the crop efficiency of our farmers of today? So before I begin to answer this question, I would like to give you an overview about India's agriculture and its farming practices. So as you all must know, Agriculture is the backbone of human civilization ever since its inception. From the early days of raising livestock to cultivating crops, it has sustained communities, driven economies, and shaped cultures across the globe. In the world grappling with multitude of challenges today, it is imperative for us to understand the importance of the agriculture sector. Food. Food is a fundamental need and ensuring its availability, accessibility, and quality is a fundamental responsibility. Improving the agriculture sector will have direct implications on global food security. Global food security is important because our world has an ever-increasing population rate, estimating to be 10 billion, ladies and gentlemen, 10 billion by 2050. Coming back to my question, what can be done to increase the crop efficiency of farmers in India today? The answer to this is simple but yet effective. The only thing we need is a transition to the fourth agricultural evolution, also called Agriculture 4.0. Before again, I begin to define what Agriculture 4.0 is, I would like to reflect on the first three agricultural evolutions. The first agriculture revolution brought about the advent of farming. The second agriculture revolution was brought by industrialization and mechanization. And the third agriculture revolution was brought about by the rise of technology. Similarly, the fourth agriculture revolution is convergence of various cutting edge technologies. These technologies include big data, internet of things, biotechnology, satellite imagery, remote sensing, and many more. By harnessing the powers of these technologies, we have the potential to overcome challenges such as climate change, food security, and resource scarcity. I would begin by uh, giving you some information about these methods. These methods are not in only increasing crop efficiency, but will also be more environmentally stable. The first method, which I believe and is my preference, is satellite monitoring and remote sensing. Satellite monitoring and remote sensing is when you use satellite data provided either by government institutions or private sectors. The data provided by satellite monitoring can give us valuable information about crop health, vegetation indices, weather patterns, and soil moisture. Through these valuable data, farmers can make informed decisions about where to supply their irrigation or where to give fertilization or pesticides. Through agriculture, uh, through this, what we can do is perform various precision agriculture methods. That is, we assign specific strategies of farming to specific areas of land. Through this, what farmers can do is supply water quantity to a very specific area. We can figure out areas of concern on a big, vast farming land. Through this, farmers can increase their own crop efficiency. Therefore, satellite monitoring and remote sensing is one of the most practical and easy interpretable methods of modern farming. Second method I come to is robotics and automation. Autonomous drones can, uh, through their cameras and sensors, can give us valuable data, detect diseases, and also provide uh, 
crop uh, vigor. Crop vigor is something which gives us the health of a crop in a particular land. Uh, ro uh, robotics and autonomous uh, automation is providing, is revolutionizing the way labor intensive work works. Through this, we can free up our manual labor and they can work in higher quality activities. The, the higher quality activities include sustainable land management, research work, and very small. The third method I come to is gene editing and uh, biotechnology. Gene editing and biotechnology in the upcoming sector includes CRISPR Cas9. Can all of you raise your hand and tell me how many of you know what CRISPR Cas9 is? So let me explain it to you. CRISPR Cas9 is the editing of a specific crop's DNA and modifying it to make different higher variety crops. So these higher variety crops that can increase the produce of a farmer. So what we can do is the DNA we edit can code the way the crop works and the crop will work in for a suitable weather pattern and at suitable climate. Therefore, we'll be there, uh, therefore, we'll be minimizing our losses and farmers will be getting more produce. For the scope of today's debate, I will be only explaining to you these three methods. Uh, there is a very big reason. If all of you heard my first anecdote, I had mentioned why I'll be setting the house in the state only for India. India, although a leading producer of spices and pulses, does not stand at a very high pedestal at a global world when it comes to agricultural advancement. Although, two-thirds of our population is indirectly or di directly dependent on the agriculture sector. But still, where the problem lies? The two-thirds of this population out of which the majority which is directly involved is our rural farmers. And to bring about a change in the rural sector through technology, that this is where the challenge lies. And to curb this challenge, we play a very important role. The young minds of today, the innovative and scientific minds of today. It is for us to strengthen the farmer community of today. We have to spread the message, give information about various technologies upcoming in the global world and spread the message to our rural farmers. I took my first step three years back when I laid the foundation for my organization, Agri Solutions. Today, I stand with an all-women work farmer force who are using satellite data to make specific crop models. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, it was the same resistance which every person who sets out to change the world faces. It was not easy to bring about technological advancement in an already backward society. I faced the resistance. But it is only when you overcome this resistance, you are able to fulfill your goal as a social worker. Now, aligning my step talk with the uh, theme of today, which is Convergence of Scientific Inquiry and Technological breakthrough. It is important to foster change in an agriculture sector to acknowledge this intersection. Therefore, I motivate all you young minds here to move into the agriculture sector. Because it is only when the agriculture sector, food security of India improves, the other sectors will be able to improve. Therefore, let us embrace our own important scientific inquiry and technological breakthrough. To, to be propellers of change, we need to believe in a cause. Therefore, let's unite together to, to, make an to make the agriculture sector a better and more improved sector. Thank you.